Hey, good afternoon, it's Sabine. It is Sunday, August the 7th, and after sundown, Jerusalem time, in a couple of hours, the evening portion of the 9th of Av will begin. So the 9th of Av on the lunar calendar is August the 7th and the 8th. Others refer to it as 8th or 9th, but I believe it is the 7th and the 8th. And what is going on in the heavens is going to be really interesting because as the moon has just passed the altar of redemption in Libra, she's going to come face to face with the Redeemer himself. That happens on August 8th and in between we have the betrothal and the finalization prior to the wedding of Ruth and Boaz. We see that depicted in the heavens. So the Overcomer Bride is about to cross over. We have the waning crescent. We have just passed the division of the moon and she's about to cross over the fiery river, Daniel 710, the refining fire. And then maybe she is going to see Lord coming in the clouds. On August 7th, tonight after sundown, during the evening portion of the lunar ninth of all at exactly 726 jerusalem time the moon bride is at meridian its highest point in the evening sky as she rises against the backdrop of the legs of ophiuchus the restrainer the type of the holy spirit holding the serpent serpents constellation serpents uh in check so it's not able to attack her from above and below the scorpion lurks underneath the water but he has his foot on the enemy so the moon is going to be in that straight that narrow that dire straits in between the serpent above scorpion below but because the holy spirit the restrainer is there she's going to be able to overcome the heart of the scorpion that happens today and then the stinger stars as well. So this scene of the moon arising in between the legs of Ophiuchus tonight reflects both the betrothal, but also the aftermath, the judicial aftermath, the scenes in the book of Ruth. Ruth was spiritually ready and adorned when she went to the threshing floor of the wheat harvest, the, the um, the story plays out in between the barley and the wheat harvest, just like we are now in that season, in between the uh, betrothal and the uh, coming of our Lord. She went to the threshing floor at midnight and laid herself at Boaz's feet, as instructed by her mother-in-law, Naomi. She was cleansed, adorned, and anointed, and covered by Boaz's skirt. She slipped underneath the talit and we have covered how that is the uh, covering of the lord psalm 91 but in this case it was also a hidden betrothal so by doing that she petitioned him to be her uh, beloved her future husband boaz their soon to be kinsman redeemer understood her petition and reciprocated asking her to patiently wait for him as he had certain matters to resolve at the gate and that is because a nearer kinsman had a claim over the estate and also over ruth note how sagittarius the white horse revel uh, rider also mentioned in revelation 4 is actually standing at the celestial golden gate across the fiery Milky Way River, waiting for the moon to cross over on August 8th and come face to face with him. Her Stephanus crown, Corona Australis, the crown of righteousness that Paul uh, mentions, which will be given to the believers if they have faithfully endured until the end, is awaiting her at the location, which is, by that reason, the end of the believer's race. By then, the moon has overcome both the heart star and Teres and the stinger stars of Scorpion, of the Scorpion, and has passed through the dire straits 
in between the serpent and the scorpion, but also the refining fire of the celestial fiery river, the Milky Way backdrop. This is also the last day of Mars associated with war and the Archangel Michael standing up. And we're mindful that upon our arrival in the throne room, most likely the heavens will be swept clean. Um, and we read how the devil will be cast down by Michael and his angels. So Michael spends its last day, sorry, Mars spends its last day in the throne room as it enters Taurus on August 9th, where the son of William, the he-goat comet, is also present and aligns with the Pleiades, the seven churches in the book of Revelation. The scene of the moon overcoming the enemy, the heart and the stinger stars of the scorpion is also encoded in the renowned Economist cover and the ice end scene of the Ipid goat at the time when the B system and its proponents are being ushered in. In the slides below, we can see how Alice looks at the Cheshire cat. The eyes point to the stinger stars of the scorpion Shaula, which means dart or arrow, and Lasat, which means perverse, and is also known combined as the cat's eyes, highlighting the sting of death lurking as a serpent in the tree. And let's take a look at what the heavens are declaring tonight. So tonight, after sundown, 7.26 Jerusalem time, the waning moon at meridian will be at the constellation uh, Ophiuchus, overcoming the scorpion. So the moon will rise in between the legs of the restrainer, restraining the serpent wanting to seize the other crown which is placed over here corona borealis the northern crown so we have seen the moon passing the altar of redemption yesterday and the day before yesterday now she is earning the credits of being an overcomer she is in the process of overcoming the enemy below and the serpent above and by the power of the Holy Spirit, she is going to pass over the heart first and then the stinger stars of the scorpion to then cross over the Milky Way River. You can see that over here, the refining fire. And then she will come face to face with the white horse rider, Sagittarius. The crown of righteousness, Paul speaks of the end of the believer's race is laid up over here and it's also the intersection of the ecliptic with the galactic equator known as the celestial golden gate so this section is known as the celestial golden gate so this is how the moon under the covering of the restrainer overcoming the fiery river the refining fire meeting up with the lord is so similar to the account in the book of Ruth. And over there on the other side, the Southern Crown, Corona Australis, the laurel wreath that was given to athletes in Roman times when they had run the marathon. Paul refers to it in that symbolism of overcoming believers is laid up underneath the Sagittarius uh, Sagittarius white horse rider here the crown is and this is marked as the end of the believers race so on earth we have another representation of the celestial golden gate um, and of course it is also indicative of the heavenly golden gate so the moon will come face to face with the Lord in his capacity as the white horse rider on August 8th and here we see another type of um, how the enemy looks at the moon. She is looking at Lasat, which is, uh, sorry, the Cheshire cat in the novel of Alice. And that is the representation of Scorpio and especially the Stinger star. So the final two stars of, of Scorpio are known as the cat's eyes. That is what, what is encoded in the Cheshire cat in the novel Alice in Wonderland. 
So that is encoded over here. And we can see, and we covered this uh, quite a few times, how the B system and the proponents are being ushered in. Um, and there is also some um, allusion to the gateways opening the Janus portal and nuclear warfare. So we have covered this in detail and, and the link in, in the um, article actually shows the uh, previous blog which covers this uh, Newsweek uh, cover in more detail. So here we see Alice looking at the Cheshire Cat and the representation of the stinger stars of the scorpion. A similar scene is found in the end of the iPad Goat when one of the other proponents of the B system, the what I believe to be the Antichrist sun type, is ushered in with the crumbling church behind him after the summer scorching. So after the heliacal rising of the dog star Sirius, he is riding on an Anubis boat with a serious star on the back. So he did, this is an indication of this season. And then we see the reflection of the uh, eternal, how do you say that, uh, conflict between the Son of Man, Orion, the Hidden Hand constellation, and the constellation of the Scorpion. And then Mars departing from the heavenly throne room where Uranus, the planet denoting the Enoch type forerunners and the kingdom of heaven is still positioned. Mars will cross over into Taurus the bull on August the 9th. So the um, constellation denoting the Lord coming down to both rescue and judge. The celestial scene aligns with the scriptures we covered yesterday about Jesus as the Lord of the Sabbath. Because after the confrontation with the Pharisees and the Sabbath of healing and deliverance, Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. Because a conspiracy between the Pharisees and the Heronians uh, resulted in them wanting to kill him. A great multitude from the Galilee followed him, seeking healing and deliverance. But he warned them specifically to not make him known. And at that time, Jesus stills the storm. So the disciples and Jesus go into the boat. Jesus falls asleep. A, a storm arises. And they are very fearful. And they wake up Jesus. And of course, he um, commands the wind, the storm, to be peaceful and to rest. And indeed, the wind and the sea obey him. And the Lord questions their faith. So afterward, they went up into a mountain where he ordained the 12 apostles and gave them the power to minister healing and deliverance. So there was additional power given to them. He sent them to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to preach, to preach the gospel, the nearness of the kingdom of God. A potential second fulfill, fulfillment of that chapter, chapter, in, uh, chapter 10 in Matthew, synchronizes with the ministry of the end times harvesters during the time of tribulation. They will also be given power from on high and share the gospel, the kingdom of heaven being nigh. So the ministry of the 12 is noted in that chapter. Today is also the Lord's Day. Sunday, August the 7th, at sunset, starts the 9th of Av. Recall that on the evening after the resurrection, Jesus suddenly appeared in the disciples' midst when the door was shut. It was on the Lord's Day, Sunday, the first day of the week. For this reason, the Lord's followers in the early church would assemble on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, as we learn from the epistles of the early church father and ancient historians. So I was thinking this morning, like we have just about covered all the ground there is to cover with regard to calendars from all over the world and um, the tra traditions of the Pharisees, the Sadducees. We have looked in detail at what the Essenes, the wilderness brides have to teach us with the beautiful Qumran scrolls the apocryphal books and 
I realized that I didn't really cover that the early followers of Jesus actually assembled on the first day, and that is today. So the combination of what is seen in the heavens, what is noted on the calendar, um, in co so in combination with the fact that they actually met on the first day, that is when they prayed, they gathered, they uh, break bread, and drank the wine. So we're going to see that in uh, the excerpts from this article. So there's a very detailed article linked over here on the connection between uh, Pentecost and the eighth day, but also the assembly of the disciples on the first day. Of so here we read from Clement of Alexandria how he refers to the followers of the uh, of the way of the Lord, not holding to the Sabbath, which is called the first, neither to the new moon or the great day, but they seemed to worship and come together on the first day of the week, an early celebrated Sunday. day. Justin the Martyr lived and wrote about eight decades after the temple had been destroyed by the Romans. The author described in some detail the early Christian observance of a special feast day cycle which corresponded to the recorded resurrection of the Lord. This day, then, exactly corresponded to an eighth day festival, a feast which appeared each seventh week. So, on the day called Sunday, all who live in the cities or in the country gather together in one place, and the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read. <clears throat> as long as time permits. Then, when the reader has ceased, the president verbally instructs and exhorts to the imitation of these good things. Then we all rise together and pray, and before said, when our prayer is ended, bread and wine and water are brought, and the president in like manner offers prayers and thanksgivings according to his ability. And the people ascend, saying, Amen, and there is a distribution to each, and a participation of that over which thanks have been given. And to those who are absent, a portion is sent by the deacons. So Sunday is the day when they would hold their common assembly. And why, of course, backtracking to that evening of resurrection, and what is so interesting is that on the morning of the resurrection, when he met Mary in his transformed state and then went to the Father and back, he uh, instructed her to go and tell the others. And later that day, he met the two disciples on uh, the road to Emmaus. But as they had gathered in the upper room, the door was shut and the windows too. And suddenly Jesus appears in a transformed state. So at that first meeting where the disciples had gathered in the upper room, that's where he breathed on them. So that was the first distribution of the Holy uh, Ghost. He breathed the Holy Spirit into them and gave them the authority to remit and retain sin. So the first infilling and commission took place on the first day of the week. So the um, Sunday is the day on which they all uh, assembled, backtracking to this pivotal day of the kickstart of the church. So we are now in that time frame in between that first infilling and Pentecost full income and we are just like them instructed to wait for the power from on high. Jesus being crucified on the day uh, before that of Saturn and on the day after that of Saturn, which is the day of the sun, having appeared to his, his apostles and disciples. It, that's when he taught them these things, which we have submitted to also for your consideration. Here we see that today, this evening after sundown, is a beautiful day to consider because that's when the early uh, church would assemble in honor of the Lord. So we have a lot to 
uh, look forward to and to look up for. So I pray you're blessed today and I send you much love.